Hello luxury travel fans, Sky here, and we are going back to business aviation. Today we meet one of the top airplanes of Gulfstream Aerospace. The dream of pilots, the dream of businessmen, the dream of stars, and one of the symbols showing that for the guys flying on it, money is not an issue. Meet the pretty boy, Gulfstream G5. Like all Gulfstreams, the history of this flagship began with the adventures of its ancestor. The Gulfstream 4, born in the mid-1980s, was a very successful and popular aircraft. The company itself went through a difficult period of reorganization and for some time was even under control of the Chrysler Corporation. But by the early 1990s it had regained its independence. This period brought another wave of changes, but this time leading to the constant growth of the company. Naturally, the growth of the aircraft manufacturer had an effect on its airplanes. Gulfstream 4 was a great plane with excellent performance, equipped with excellent engines, avionics and providing an excellent level of comfort. However, the years were going by, the technologies were developing and the plane was slowly becoming obsolete. But when people have a good strategy, things are going good as well. By that time, several years of research were carried out, the task of which was the maximum improvement of the aircraft and, by 1992, all this work was realized in the Special Performance Gulfstream 4 project. The Model 4 SP received updated onboard electronics, improved cabin comfort and flight performance. The SP became the new generation of the Model 4 and was produced until the mid-2000s, until it was once again upgraded and renamed. But the constantly growing corporation was tormented by one problem that was following it in general for its entire history. Gulfstream was a company of a single project. Models were succeeding one another, generations were changing, and almost always they could offer only one aircraft, which was currently being produced. In addition, the market continued to grow rapidly. Due to the progress of technology, materials and engines, the aircraft performance was getting better and better, especially the range, but it did not eliminate the niche already occupied by the Model 4. The conclusion was obvious, although the risks were great. In the early 1990s, Gulfstream began to work on the new aircraft, not to replace the existing one, but to supplement it, for the first time with the second model in the line. No one of course was planning a revolution, but now it was possible to be more bold and innovative. The American Vought, the Japanese Shin Maurer and the Dutch Fokker took part in the project. They shared the risk and started work on some elements of the airframe and flight systems. As a base, as was already expected, they took the fresh model Gulfstream 4 SP, although redesigning it quite a bit. The task of the new aircraft was to conquer the new frontier, ultra-long-haul business jets, which means it had to be able to jump to a distance of 12,000 kilometers, nearly 6,500 miles. An incredible figure. Just recently, only the large wide-body airliners could fly at such distances, but now, not a little of course, but not a particularly large aircraft. The Gulfstream 4 weighed about 34 tons, half the takeoff mass of the Boeing 737-500, and the new aircraft would most likely become even heavier. One of the main challenges of a business jet is of course comfort. Flying so far and for so long is not easy for the passengers and crew. It was decided to leave the capacity the same, standard certified 19 passengers. But with such a range, it was necessary to give them more opportunities for work and rest during the long flights. The plane was not going to fly faster. The simplest solution was to make the interior, meaning the fuselage, bigger. The fuselage was extended by 1.5 meters, nearly 5 feet in the front section, between the cabin and the door, and by 60 centimeters, nearly 2 feet in the tail section, between the wing and the engines. This made it possible to slightly increase the size of the cockpit and the kitchen in the front, as well as to lengthen the interior and increase capacity of the luggage compartments in the tail. Since the cross-section dimensions of the fuselage remained the same, as did the number of windows, the new aircraft seemed to be a slightly stretched version of the old one. Well, okay, we've figured out the issues of the cabin and passengers. Now we must make it all fly with the desired performance. First, the wing. The wing underwent a massive redesign and received not only the improved mechanization and materials, but also decently changed dimensions. The engineers were not particularly shy. The wingspan had grown by almost 5 meters. The wing area also rose. This was necessary first of all to increase the stock of fuel. 
However, such a huge wing gave other bonuses. First, with these dimensions it created a strong lifting force at low speeds, which is useful during takeoffs and landings. The second bonus is quite curious. At a normal speed of about Mach 0.83, this wing increases the optimum altitude and oh it had grown. While ordinary airliners fly at a height of 10 to 12 kilometers or 40,000 feet and the Gulfstream 4 boasts with the flight altitude of 13 kilometers, the new aircraft has a ceiling of 15 and a half kilometers, over 50,000 feet, a wild indicator for a civilian vehicle. And this is not just a cool figure, thanks to this altitude the plane can fly over the usual commercial traffic, like a helicopter over a traffic jam, which is a very good thing for a super long range business jet. We are not yet finished with the airframe. In order to provide control in different modes, especially taking into account new possibilities, the tail was also fairly modified. The horizontal stabilizer grew in size by 30%. The vertical stabilizer was also not overlooked. After all the alterations, the plane was about 2 feet higher. Then it came to the power plant. Increased in size and heavier aircraft demanded a new fiery heart and received it. In the early 1990s, just in parallel with the work of Gulfstream, two industrial giants cooperated in Europe. Rolls-Royce and BMW formed a joint venture BMW Rolls-Royce Aero Engines, the brainchild of which was the new BR700. This engine, gaining thrust of over 65 kN, was not much more powerful than the good old Tay engine that was used on the Gulfstream 4. But it was more modern, more reliable and more economical, which allowed it to fly longer and, what is more important, to a bigger range. The engine, by the way, was quite popular. In addition to the Gulfstream flagship, it was also pulling the flagship of Bombardier, the model Global Express, and its modifications were applied on the Boeing 717. There were even ideas to use them in remodernization of the British Nimrod and the American B-52 Stratofortress. The Royal Air Force was not inspired by this idea. Uncle Sam is still thinking. Some control systems and most of the cockpit came right from the Gulfstream 4 SP. It had just been upgraded, so the equipment was pretty new. In addition, the requirements of comfort of the long distance flights made it necessary to implement the concept of a flying office. And this means not only great materials, but also communications. The new aircraft received the latest satellite communication systems of the time. The maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft rose to 41 tons, more than 90,000 pounds, and the task of reaching the range was complete. The new business jet could safely fly 12,000 kilometers or 7,500 miles, 10,000 kilometers with a full load of a celebrity crowd on board. The first flight of the aircraft that received the name Gulfstream 5, or just G5, was made in November 1995. Testing and certification lasted several years and ended in 1997, when the first series board was delivered to the customer. At the same time, the brand new 5 took part in the epic world tour through the economic capitals. Los Angeles, London, Hong Kong, Beijing, Tokyo, New York. 35,000 kilometers or 22,000 miles in 39 hours. Not bad. However, the life of the G5 lasted for only a few years. By the time production was closed in 2002, 193 planes were made. Of course, some of the aircraft went to the Air Force and government service parks. The military version received special equipment and the name C-37A and is being quite actively used. I said that the Gulfstream 5 was produced only a few years, but it sounds too dramatic. No, they did not end the production, but changed the generation. The original plane was gorgeous, but it required some improvements. The work on the new generation began in the early 2000s, and initially the project was called Gulfstream 5 SP. Not very original. The company presented the new project in 2002. But then, they were already part of General Dynamics and their naming changed. Now, instead of Roman indexes, Arabic were applied and G5SP turned into the Gulfstream G550. Restyling was effective. Many adjustments were made to the airframe to raise its aerodynamic quality. The plane became a little heavier, but the improved efficiency and flight performance still allowed it to increase the range by 460 km. The cabin was also redesigned. In the original version, the kitchen was unnecessarily large, so during the upgrade it was made smaller. 
the door was moved forward and, due to this, the length of the passenger compartment was increased. This is even noticeable from outside. Another, seventh pair of windows appeared on the G550. But of course the main revolution happened in the avionics and in the cockpit. The aircraft received the Honeywell Primus Epic Complex with four huge displays, the HUD from Rockwell Collins and the EVS system from the Elbit. It is a group of cameras and sensors that gave pilots additional information, including visual in flight. Very convenient, for example at night or in bad weather. The complex is visible from the outside. It is a small fairing with glazing in the front, located in the lower part of the nose section. But they sometimes change place. For example, on the G500 model, the EVS is located on the top, right in front of the cockpit. But back in 2003, the G550 became the first civilian aircraft to receive a system of this kind as a basic equipment and was certified with it initially. Well, since we're talking high-tech, Gulfstream also put synthetic vision on the plane. Any wish for your money. Deliveries of the G550 began in 2003 and they were pretty popular. By the beginning of 2018, the sky has already seen more than 550 550s. This aircraft also had many modifications. The C-37B was a logical continuation of the G5-C-37A, but it didn't end there. This time the military took up the plane closely and created a whole bunch of aerial reconnaissance and electronic warfare aircraft. Many options with different, sometimes quite exotic looks, which were the result of applied modifications. In the civilian sector, it also had different versions. Already in 2004, in addition to the G550, the G500 arrived. This aircraft had similar dimensions, but its equipment was a little simpler, and it was lighter due to the reduced amount of fuel. Its range of course also dropped to 10,700 km, or 5,700 miles. The plane can be considered a cheaper option of the G550. Well, while the top model costs about 60 million dollars, the light version a little over 50. Almost for free. The Gulfstream 5 was being developed from 1998 to 2002. A total of 193 planes were made. 193 very expensive planes. 36 million dollars in 1998. Not cheap at all. Even now these machines cost about 10 million for a 20 year old plane. One of the first buyers of the G5 was Mark Cuban, an American billionaire, owner of several cable channels and the Dallas Mavericks team. In 1999, he bought the plane simply by transferring money to the Gulfstream Aerospace account via the internet. 40 million dollars. For the e-commerce of that time this figure was recorded in the Guinness Book of Records. In the year 2000, Steve Jobs received an additional equity stake in the company and a new G5 as a gift from the Apple's board of directors. In general, the story hints that this plane is the perfect gift if you need to suck up to someone very important. Pour some money in a G5. Yes. A G5 airplane. Yes. Well, best friends of women are diamonds, best friends of men are expensive machines, in some cases the flying ones. And if the G5 is outdated, the G550 and G500 booklets will always help you with an idea for a gift. With the G500 however, there is a little confusion. The fact is that in the early 2000s, the pair of G500, G550 was created, about which this story tells. But now there is another G500, which is being created in tandem with the G600 model. These are other planes, they belong to the G7 generation, which we will get to another time. And today I think we can finish. The world of flying limousines is big and beautiful, but not all at once. Luxurious flights and soft landings to you. <laughs>